Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at some actually really simple fixes you can do yourself on your own computer to prevent it having some weird issues with random reboots, blue screens of death, and all those kinds of weird memory related issues, even if you have got high quality RAM, which appears to be working fine most of the time, but every now and then just leaves you completely stumped on what is going on. Now this is actually very relevant to anyone who's using an AM5 system, as I am in the, uh, the PC behind me, and actually most of my diagnostic work on this system has led to this video being created. So if you're like me, you've got an AM5 system, or even AM4, Intel systems, whatever it is, you may still find this information valuable. So please do continue listening, because it will help you with your diagnostic tasks. So a little bit of a brief introduction. The system has gone through three motherboards, at least four or five sets of RAM, few different graphics cards, multiple drives, numerous power supplies, basically you've gone through pretty much everything. So essentially at some point, every single component on this system has been changed, along with various BOSS updates as we've gone through the months. But there's one thing which has always remained the same, and that is the fact that AM5 for me has been very unstable. It had worked for weeks on end, then for some reason or other, it would just go nuts and it wouldn't boot, and even I've had issues where it's been in the BIOS and the BIOS is just frozen. And that is kind of the worst thing that can possibly happen because if you're in Windows, there's lots of other programs in the background which can be run in, which will potentially kind of conflict and cause crashes, blue screens of death, etc., etc. Those are somewhat expected, even on modern systems. But if you're actually just in the BIOS, try and make changes or even just trying to save your settings that you've changed and then your BIOS hangs, then you know that something is seriously wrong. Now, like I've said, many things have changed in this system, including various different types of RAM. And it led me to think very recently, what did we used to do when Ryzen first came out? So for those of you who have been in the computer industry a little while, you may remember when Ryzen came out and it was particularly unstable. It was a new platform, it was DDR4, and we were kind of in that very early stages, the infancy of the platform, and it was very unstable. So it led me to think, what did I do back then to make my system more stable? And the key thing I did, which I actually kind of jogged a memory recently, is I set up my RAM timings manually. Now this is actually super important because you'll know if you've bought any RAM, first of all, it's done on pricing due to its speed and its characteristics. So for instance, on this RAM here, the DDR4, it's 3600 megahertz and on the back of the box, there's printed the actual specifications for the RAM, which hopefully you're seeing from a close-up. So you've got your CAS latencies, some primary, secondary, and tertiary timings, along with a voltage, etc. And the same is still common with DDR5. Same sort of deal here. So this is 6,000 mega transfers per second. And again, on the back of the box, we've got the specifications. Now, don't worry if you're watching this and you're thinking, oh God, I don't have the box for my RAM. I'm not sure what it is. Most RAM sticks you'll find actually printed on the sticker on the RAM itself should be the actual settings. So if you don't have your box, don't worry, or if you don't have your receipts or anything, you should be able to find the information from your RAM to enable you to install that into your BIOS and manually configure your settings. So let's head over to the computer now and we'll go through the MSI BIOS, which we've got on the system running behind us. And I'll give you a brief introduction of how to change these settings. Now, obviously, all motherboards will be slightly different, but in theory, the principles will be the same. So let's go through and uh, take a look. So this is the BIOS for our MSI motherboard. So this is the B650 uh, Wi-Fi gaming, whatever it is. Uh, there we go, Edge Wi-Fi, B650, as you can see there, and we're on the latest BIOS, etc., etc. So this is the main page. Now, normally for your motherboard, depending on the brand, you should have something similar like this on your starting page. So in some motherboards, you'll have just XMP, which is extreme memory profile, which technically is a Intel specification, but we'll kind of overlook that a little bit. And also we've got Expo, which is uh, AMD's new version. So normally what you do is you go into your BIOS, set up your RAM, you click on Expo, and that would pretty much be it. And you'd be happy you, if it didn't work in that Expo profile, you can maybe choose another one. Now let me explain that a little bit clearer. So in this particular board, we're gonna go through the OC settings, and here we can have our overclocking. So if you scroll down through, you should find your RAM settings as we've got here, DRAM setting. So here we've got XMP currently disabled, Expo is currently disabled and pretty much everything here is set to auto. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is to go to Expo and we're gonna enable that. So now we get our timings. So this is the timings which are actually on the side of the RAM stick and they match absolutely perfectly. 
So that's fine. You can, if you want to here, also go into DRAM frequency and you can manually set it so that rather than being auto, it definitely uses the right speed every single time. This potentially could be helpful, again, depending on your RAM, your settings, etc., etc. But we're going to go for the kind of the bulk standard layout here. Some other things here, we've got the memory context restore. You may or may not have this, but the most important one is going to be your advanced DRAM configuration. Now, again, yours may be called something different, so do have a little look around, but you should find something very similar where we can actually change our timings. So if we click on this now, you can see I've actually set these manually. So normally they would be set to auto. So here are our primary four sets of timings. So we've got primary timing, secondary, tertiary, and the fourth timing. I'm not sure what the name is for that, but these are the ones you want to make sure that are actually right. Now I'm going to show you some footage from my other Intel system now, just to give you some kind of idea of what happens if you set these to auto. So on my Intel system, the RAM that we've actually got in there is CL19 RAM, and it is 3600 megahertz or mega transfers, but if we've let the bar set to auto, it's actually set the CAS latency to 18, which is a little bit of a tighter time in. Now, fortunately for the Intel system, this is absolutely fine. Maybe the memory controller on Intel is more mature and that's why it's stable. But for some reason, heading back over to this system, if these settings were left to auto, which normally it would be, so if you put a zero in here and enter, it'll go back to zero. So after doing this and rebooting the system, it would actually show some of the settings. And for some reason, it was trying to use 40, 42, 42, 72, or something along those lines. So something completely different than what is actually on the RAM sticks. And that, I firmly believe, is what was causing my instability problems on the AM5 platform. So the takeaway of this video, if nothing else, is to try and manually set your RAM timings especially if you're having some very odd, peculiar behavior. If you're having a motherboard which literally freezes in the BIOS, then definitely this is something I would consider. Obviously, if you've looked at other things such as overheating, like if your CPU core temperature is uh, really high, then that is something to look at, it's probably overheating. But if all the, everything else looks normal, but you're still getting these weird problems every now and then, then worth doing this. Now, something else I should stress as well, and I'll put in big letters on the screen right now, Every single time you do a BOSS update or you take out your RAM and replace your RAM, you will need to redo these timings every single time. Unfortunate as it is, and as convenient as it is to let things just sit there and be on auto all day long, that isn't going to help you in the long run, especially if you're having instability. If you're not having instability, then it's absolutely fine. You can leave that and you probably need to look at another video. But certainly I would try doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and put my settings back in now. So literally it's just a matter of copying across what it says there. And also you will find that XMP and uh, DOCP, sorry, I've done that wrong. Uh, yeah, XMP and uh, Expo, that sort of thing. They, done it again. They will try and change their settings. So you may find that your system reboots once, absolutely fine. But the next time it reboots, it tries to retrain the RAM and it's using different settings once again. So again, it's one of those things where you're chasing a moving goalpost trying to diagnose your system. So if you put these settings in, lock them in, reset the system, then you can see what happens. And hopefully, fingers crossed, you should have a stable system. So there we go. Sadly, unfortunately, it is a slightly longer video than I would have liked it to have been, but there are reasons for what I do. So learning about why your system is doing certain things is actually really beneficial especially to me, because it means if I've already taught you in a video, you don't have to ask the same questions again on the Discord, which of course you are absolutely more than welcome to do so. And the sound of that ping means that someone else is trying to ask a similar question possibly already. So I better wrap this one up. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video, or of course the Discord. Thanks for watching.